Hi everyone, it's Casey Williams. Subaru has been having lots of success lately, especially with their crossovers. You know, vehicles like the Forester, the smaller Crosstrek, and of course, the iconic Outback. They've done very, very well for the company. Very loyal owners and very capable vehicles. But there's one segment so far that's kind of eluded them, and that's the kind of full-size three-row crossover segment. The Tribeca was a good try, but it just wasn't quite what it needed to be. Well, now here we are with a much bigger crossover, three rows, and really an attempt to get you know, a lot of passengers inside of it. It's the 2019 Subaru Ascent. Let's go have a look at it. Well, it's kind of interesting having the new Ascent this week because people would look at it and they kind of look at it twice and it's like it was familiar to them, but they couldn't quite figure out why it was so big. And, and that's just because it really does kind of look like a cross between a Forester and, and, and the Outback as well. And I think that's really good. It connects it to the Subaru family and it's very clear, you know, what it is and who it's made by. And it's, and it's traits like, you know, the grill, again, I actually own a Subaru Outback and parked in the garage this week side by side. You can just see a lot of semblance. The grill's the same, the headlamp's kind of the same shapes. These are actually LEDs, um, adaptive LEDs that kind of swivel in the corners as well. LED fog lamps. So again, a really bold face and very kind of high-end look as well. This is the Touring Edition, which is the top grade. So it has you know, some other features like the 20-inch alloy wheels on it, some of the extra chrome trim, mirror caps, kind of the satin silver chrome door trim here. The big big roof rack as the Subarus are known for. But again, when you look at it down the side, it really does look like a giant Forester. And I think that's you know, both good and bad. It doesn't really distinguish it much, but I think that's that's the family look, and I think it's okay. And a lot of these customers are moving up from a from the smaller SUVs in the Subaru lineup up to the Ascent. Let's come around the back. Again, no doubt who makes it. Tail lamps, the way they wrap around, look very nice. And being the Touring, you get the kind of chrome trim on the back as well. Looks very nice. Power hatch. And we'll take you inside in a second to show you the third row seat. But in the back, with the seats up, not a lot of space. I mean, if you're trying to get golf clubs in here, you might get one set, maybe two sets if you stack them. But you're not going to get a lot in here. So if you think you're going to take six passengers and all of your luggage for a week, that's probably not going to happen unless you put something up on the roof rack. But it's easy enough to put the seats down. Pull the lever. Down they go. And when you do that, you have plenty of space. So if you're taking four people with the twin captain's chairs like our car has, plenty of space for all your luggage in the back. Well, a major difference between the Ascent and the Outback is underneath the hood. You can't get a six-cylinder in the Ascent. It comes only with a 2.4-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine, but it delivers 260 horsepower and a robust 277 pound-feet of torque. So in this vehicle, it has a continuously variable transmission, standard all-wheel drive. You know, that's enough power in here. I had it on the interstate, had on two-lane back roads, drove it in town, and it works out really well. Um, I don't normally just love the continuously variable transmission, but what's really nice with the turbo is you kind of have that added torque and the, kind of the added oomph from the turbo that kind of helps smooth out some of the continuously variable transmission tendencies. So I think this powertrain works out really well. Um, one of the real pluses is gas mileage. So you get 20 miles per gallon in the city, 26 miles per gallon on the highway, which is pretty good for a vehicle this big. I think the interior of the Touring Edition is it's one of the strongest attributes. And to me, it's really, you know, it's almost at a level of, you know, some of the Japanese, especially luxury crossovers. And I just think it's very nice. You know, this has the Java Brown seats, and to me, they just feel nice. They feel a bit softer and some more expensive. I like the center with the stitching. It just feels smooth. And even some materials up on the dashboard, you know, this down below, it feels like it could have come out of a Range Rover. It's just very smooth and very nice and very soft. Same with the stitching here. So I think they've done a very nice job. You know, the center console is very much like the new Crosstrek. And I like this a lot better, especially than like my Outback that's two years old now. It's a lot easier to use. The screen's a lot easier to use. It's very intuitive. Much bigger knobs. You've got volume tuning knobs, which I think is always great. Down below, radio, navigation, your apps, media. Very easy here to find as well. So I think this is very nice. Um, has Bluetooth, of course. USB inputs down below. Even has an auxiliary jack still. Great. So this also has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Easy to hook up your iDevices. Um, has Harman Card and audio system, which sounds pretty good. Panoramic sunroof, dual pane up above, so the rear passengers uh, get, get, get some sunlight as well. Has tri-zone automatic climate control. You know, each front passenger plus the rear get their own controls and vents in the back. So it's pretty comfortable. And today's you know, a pretty hot day. It was in the 90s today. And you know, my family and I spent a lot of time on the road in it, even sitting in traffic. And it was just ice cold, you know, the air conditioning. Just absolutely fantastic. So some of the safety features on this. This has Subaru's EyeSight system. And what they do is they have stereo cameras. So they have two cameras, one on each side of the rearview mirror up here. And they use that for the forward collision alert system, 
the four crash mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, all that's from up above. Um, car also has blind spot warnings and rear cross path detection. So again, full, full suite of safety devices and all the comfort you could ever want in here. So I have to admit, I was a little bit of a fool with the back seats. You know, when I first got the vehicle, I sat in the third row and it was really tight and I thought, this is kind of a joke. Um, especially, you know, with the, with the Tribeca before, its real downside was it was just kind of small inside and the third row seat really wasn't adequate. So I get in here and I get in the back and I can't even get in the back seat. You know, my legs are just no leg room at all. But then I realized some clever things I've actually done. So the seat slides forward. So you can slide, it fo so you can slide it forward. If you have four people in the car like this with the captain's chairs, you slide it all the way back, get all the leg room you could ever want. But if you're just trying to take some short distances with maybe six people in the car, slide it forward, got enough leg room here, and you've got enough, enough leg room in the back. Another feature, you can slide this absolutely completely forward. So really easy to get in and out this way. And some other clever things they did. I like the armrest. But there's these handles here, and they actually took those from the Japanese bullet train. They just look really cool. They have this kind of grip on the bullet trains. But they thought they need, and what it's for is, you know, to kind of help you get to the seats and have something to grab onto when you're getting out of the back. I think that's really clever. Down below, if you have a child seat, I have a four year old, so I'm always clipping my kid's seat in and out of here. This is one of the easiest ones I've ever used. Little covers, open them up, hook is right here on both sides of it. Very easy to put the seat in and use it. So I think they've just done some very clever things back here. And it's other little things they did. You know, there's air vents up above. So these two passengers each have their own air vent. The two passengers in the back actually have their own air vents as well. Very nice. Own climate controls down here. A household plug, USB plugs. Again, your climate controls as well. So I just think they've just done a lot of really clever stuff in the back and just makes it very useful. Well, a lot of the cars we test, you know, we do acceleration and it's about performance, especially the cars we've had lately. Um, this one's not about that at all. Although again, with 260 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque, the Turbo 4, it's certainly not underpowered. You know, I drove it you know, quite a bit on the highway, drove it to my parents' house, two lane roads, interstate travel, and plenty of power. And I think, I, I don't, like I said, I don't love the continuous variable transmission, but with the Turbo, it really kind of smooths it out, it doesn't whine as much, and I think it just is a lot, just a lot nicer, more pleasant driving experience. But you know, you step down on it, it's got, it's got enough power to move this vehicle and for what you expect out of it. And some other things I've noticed, you know, like between this and like my Outback or a Crosstrek, you know, it's a bigger vehicle. You know, an Outback drives, you know, kind of like a heavy mid-size sedan. This feels like a big crossover. So it's, you know, it's a little more wobbly than like a Crosstrek would be, but it is a considerably larger vehicle too. So, but I don't, and, and I think for what it is, I think it drives very, very nice. It has an independent suspension all around. It handles the bumps fine and, and it just, just drives very nice. But when you're on the highway, you know, you just, you can start to know some things like the steering wheel, I think just grips really nice. And the, the uh, safety systems, it's got a, a little bit of a heads up display effect down here for the forward collision warning and lane keep assist. It's got little yellow lights that kind of blink up on the windshield. So it's really nice. It's not, it's not too intrusive. You know, it doesn't just drive you crazy, but it works out pretty well. You know, the adaptive cruise control on the highway is really nice. You can just set it and it'll keep a safe distance you know, from the other cars in front of you. But I think Subaru has one of the best crash avoidance systems in, in the industry right now. And again, compared to some of the older Subarus, I think the infotainment system works out really well. Harman Kardon speakers work very nice. And having the twin captain's chairs in the back, I think is really nice when you take people on a trip. And you now you got the third row seat. It's probably not the roomiest third row in a full-size crossover, but it's certainly adequate to get, you know, you, you and your spouse and a couple of couples with you to go play golf or go play tennis. And I think that's really what you need it to be. And if you have kids, you've got plenty of space to put four kids in the back and drive anywhere you want to drive. So overall, I think, you know, it drives nice, it's exactly what you expect, and I think Subaru did a pretty good job with it. I think Subaru did exactly what they needed to do with the Ascent. You know, it's a vehicle that Subaru loyalists can move up into, but it's also a vehicle for people who really like Subarus and what they stand for, but they just didn't have a vehicle that suited them in the past. Now they've got a larger three-row crossover. That's exactly what they need. And I think it's really nice that they've done this. You know, the styling is very Subaru. They've kept the X mode, held descent control. It's got 8.7 inch of ground clearance like the Outback. So you can really do some pretty decent off-roading if you want to. And with the Touring Edition, you have all the luxury you could ever want. So let's talk about pricing. This starts just under $32,000. As equipped, you're looking at 
$670. And again, I think if you're thinking about a three row luxury crossover, I think it's a pretty fair deal. Well, next week we'll have another fun car. Until then, storm forward.